Here is a problem and part of it is a quiz for you. Will a reciprocal function always have discontinuity? That's the question. Will reciprocal of a quadratic function always have three parts? That's the second question. Some of the students are under the impression that if you have to draw a reciprocal of a quadratic function, it divides the plane into three parts, right? But here we have three different examples which will contradict all those thoughts and also show you that there are times when reciprocal of a quadratic function is a continuous curve without any vertical asymptote. Okay, now let's see how it is. First one is what you normally get. Now here we have a function x squared minus something which seems to be minus 1 and uh, a value is also not 1 because the first step is not 1 but half so it is probably uh, half of well let me just assume f of x equals to half here half of x square minus 1 why did I say half because the first step is like half right and second step is not 3 but 1 and a half so it is going by the steps of 1 3 5 7 times half so that is how I get the equation, right? Simple as that. How will you draw a reciprocal of this? You will first look for x-intercepts and draw a vertical asymptote there. There you are. So you got a vertical asymptote here, right? There you are. So you have a long vertical asymptote. Perfect. And the center portion is all negative for you here. So center portion, this value seems to be minus 1. So if it is minus 1, reciprocal of minus 1 will be minus 1. So this point is common. Perfect. All these points are less than minus 1. So their reciprocals are going to be greater than minus 1. And as you approach x-intercept from negative side, you are going to approach negative infinity for the reciprocal. And therefore, that part of the curve should be like this. Well, this is half it will be a 2 so we get a couple of points here which will help us to draw and then we'll just draw like this this is the power right as far as these two sides are concerned they are positive and their reciprocals will be positive first look for the invariant point which is 1 there you are and then couple of other points which will give you a good result for example 4 4 will be 1 fourth very close to the line right 2 2 will be half kind of here right now half will give you 2 and then like this so this part is like 1 over x and going through the invariant point similarly we have this symmetrical kind of function so we have three part as expected by most of the students reciprocal of a quadratic function. Perfect. Let's move on to the second one. Second one reciprocal is kind of tricky. How many x-intercepts does it have? Only one. So that means there is only one vertical asymptote. First part. So the vertical asymptote happens to be y-axis. The equation for this is x equals to 0. Well, many times students make a mistake here also. They write y equals to 0. No, it is not. It is x equals to 0. Perfect. And now to draw this reciprocal, what am I going to do? I am looking first for the point where it is 1. Here it is. So these are my 1's. So they will always remain common to both the functions. The function and its reciprocal. Then 2, reciprocal of 2 will be half. There you are. Correct? And then let's go for 4. 4 is here, 1 4. So it's very close to the line. 4 is here, kind of like this, right? And here we can look for half, which will give me 2. And this is very close. So like, so we'll just join these lines. As you see, it will not touch x-axis, right? It will go very, very close to it, though. There you are. 
So important thing when you draw this function is that you should consider 1, 1, which is invariant, right? And then a few other points to draw your graph. And you should approach your vertical asymptote from both the sides. In this case, do you see something? Your range is all positive numbers greater than zero. There's nothing on the negative side. And there's only one vertical asymptote, not two as in the previous case. Correct? Have a good look at it because these kinds of problems come in the test and create trouble. Let's look into the next one, which is even more trouble. Here, let's look for the x-intercepts. Well, this line is clear. There are no x-intercepts. Since there are no x-intercepts, there can't be any vertical asymptote, correct? So no vertical asymptote. So that's a reciprocal function without any vertical asymptote. Good job. Now, let's draw it. How can we draw it now without vertical asymptote? Well, we have a minimum here and the minimum seems to be half of half. Let's assume this to be one-fourth. Reciprocal of one-fourth is four. So that would be here, correct? Okay, now let's see where 1 is. 1 is 1 is here, so we'll take 1 here, 1 here, okay? So that is 1. Okay, now where is this? This is 4, and let's assume this is 1 over 4, and here it is 2. So let's say this is half for us. Similarly, we'll take points on this side, right? So 2 and half, okay, 2 and half for us and 4 and 1 fourth for us like this, right? So we can have some points here. Let's say this is half for us. So that will be 2, right? Similarly, this is half for us and 2 for us. Now we can join these points. Do you see that? So we have a reciprocal function here, which will look like this. It has to go through 1, okay? It's kind of a bell like this right now do you see that there are no discontinuities here and it has a local maximum at four okay so that is how the function will look like and probably the equation of our parabola here is y equals two so do we see the steps from the vertex this is our vertex right so the first step is is kind of Half, right so this is half x square plus 1 over 4 which is above the x-axis do you see that 1 over 4 we are assuming this point this point to be 1 over 4 okay and drawing our rest of the graph I hope you understand the point that all reciprocal functions may not have vertical asymptotes they may have one vertical asymptote or they may have two vertical asymptotes. Reciprocal of quadratic functions, okay? Because quadratic functions, you know, can have two real roots, one real root or no real root, correct? If b square minus 4ac is negative, then they don't have any real root. And that is the case, which is here, okay? Remember that. Thanks. I hope you learned from it and don't do those mistakes in your test. Thank you.